In this video, I want to talk a little bit about snow landings and whiteout. Snow can make landings easier if the terrain is uneven, but if there's a fresh layer of snow, it can make them dangerous when the downwash kicks up the light snow and it makes you lose your references, especially if there's flat light. Let's look at the first out of two LCs after we had landed to give you a better overview. Here we have arrived at our landing spot in the early morning. As you can see, there is enough room to fit in comfortably, but there are some walls left by the snow plow that we cannot get too close to to the right. On the left, there is around one meter of clearance from the rotor even when stopped, so that's no problem. This is the second approach to this LC on this day, but the light is nearly identical to the first approach. As we get closer and closer and start whipping up more and more snow, you can see that the features get harder and harder to see. But the familiarity of the spot and the small amount of snow here lets me have a clear view of the trees up to my right. This approach is later in the day to the same spot. The cloud cover has dissolved a little and the sun has risen. The light is reaching the surface and it is very easy to see the huge difference light makes as it highlights all the little details and shadows on the ground. As I'm getting closer you can now clearly see the tire tracks in the snow. Having them in the peripheral is a huge help unless you detect any drift immediately. Additionally, we put a bag in the front right of the landing spot for reference, which is standard practice. Clearly, the second approach has preferable conditions, but in this case, there was enough reference in the first approach to feel comfortable all the way to landing. This is the landing we did early in the morning, dropping the guys off up on site. We had done a recon earlier before doing this attempt, but had not gone low enough to check the landing first. It seemed fine from the recon, and I had decided on a landing spot that seemed to give the best reference point with a little tree out to my right. The wind is pretty strong from the front and is helping a little with dissipating the snow that is being kicked up by the downwash. I still have references out to my right, but at one point there is very little. I keep flying it down since I can still see out to my right, and when I feel the skids touch the snow, I now have the mirror by my feet to help keep reference and keep me from drifting. We had briefed the guys on where we wanted them to sit when returning in the afternoon to pick them up. We told them to sit to the front right of the skid marks left in the snow to give me a better reference when landing. Here is the approach later in the afternoon when returning to the same spot to fly the guys back down again. As you can see here there are more shadows formed on the ground with more visible details. The difference the light makes is absolutely enormous. The biggest difference, however, is the guys now sitting there in the front right to be my reference points. When the visual references are this good, it makes the job infinitely easier and safer. When landing in whiteout conditions, visual references are absolutely essential. If you lose them, do not hesitate to go around and come in and try again. A trick that is possible and used quite often is to fly low and drop a bag or something similar to use as a reference. Another trick is to turn your landing light on to help give the ground more definition. It is also possible to stay above your landing zone in a hover while maintaining your references for a little bit to let the downwash get rid of the worst of the light snow in the top layer, so that you will have less snow kicked up when you go into land. 
that's it for this time thanks for watching see you next time